of life, not so much quantity of life. In there. Guys, it is a beautiful uh, Wednesday morning, and I'm so sorry that I'm starting the vlog a couple days late because um, I started training for my job this last Monday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Last week, I did start technically working. However, it was for um, technical checks and camera checks and blah, 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 blah. So this week is eight hours a day, actually nine hours because I have an hour lunch break, which is nice because I need it. But eight hours a day, five days a week, um, just sitting and listening and um, learning about the company that I've worked for for 13 years. Um, yeah, the reason I had to start over again is because, as many of my ongoing followers know, subscribers know that um, I was in California and had been working for the same company for 13 years. And in California, they closed operations. So that means I had no job. So then I had to go and I was working as a freelance or community interpreter rather. And I worked for the courts and legal and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, um, since we moved to Tennessee, uh, operations are up in Tennessee. So um, I was able to reapply for the job that I already had for 13 years. <laughs> and uh, get it and start all over again. So I'm learning everything that I have been doing for 13 years. So it's a little bit on the boring side. However, um, I find that with my brain the way it has been in the last, you know, five, six years, uh, not holding on to information and words and stuff, learning all of this tech stuff and all of this procedural stuff and everything, rules and regs, all the stuff that goes with work, um, has been a huge benefit to me because instead of just plopping me down in the chair and saying, go, you know, and me like, oh my gosh, okay, how do you do this again? I'm actually getting detailed information that, um, no, I don't need it all, but it's a good refresher. And I think that uh, for me personally, it worked out to be the best. <laughs> so anyway, all right, so I am camera ready. Today is just casual, um, not super casual, but I mean, like I have, you wear dark colors, your hands have to show up, see? Um, makeup ready, hair pulled back. I, but I did put a bow in it today. I don't know if you guys can see that and stuff. I just thought it's just a peekaboo effect, you know, but it just made me feel a little bit more less severe <laughs> with my hair <gasps> pulled back and everything. Anyway, well, I've got like, hmm, like two seconds, so I better get going. Just wanted to greet you guys, tell you what was going on, and I do have information about our, um, my meeting uh, with oncologist and my homopathic alternative medicine doctor. And we have a plan set up to attack these cancer cells that are growing in my body. And yeah, back to war, back to war. But I'm ready. I'm mentally ready. Physically, I'm getting there. Um, I'm not going to let cancer bring me down. There's just no, not going to happen. Not going to happen. <laughs> All right, you guys. Love you. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. And I will be back in a bit. Hi guys. Okay, so I just got through with my lunch break and I am telling you, I'm dying. <laughs> training is different from actually doing my job and training is just sitting, 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 sitting and you get like, you're supposed to get like a 10-15 minute break like mid-morning uh, then I get an hour for lunch, and then I get 10, 15 minutes in the afternoon, and then I'm off at 6. However, the trainers are behind in what they need to teach us, so they are trying to cram everything in. So they've given us like 5 minutes here, 5 minutes there, equivalent to your 15-minute break. Yes, but it's just not the same. It's like you run in, go to the bathroom, come back in, and it's just like my body has not had a proper like stretch break, 
um, get off my spine break. And a second thing is I do not have all of my, um, my comfort items that I usually use while I'm working from my camera. I have a chair, but I don't have my uh, lumbar support. I don't have, I have a special like, it's like a butt thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's for, to take pressure off the tailbone and the spine. It is an orthopedic one that I had to order and it's taken some time to get here. Um, it helps a lot. And then I have ice packs. I know it sounds like I'm so old, right? <laughs> um, but not just me. Not I'm not the only one that uses stuff like this. I mean, other interpreters do the same that don't have cancer. They're just like, it's just hard to sit a lot, you know. Anyway, I have um, uh, this thing that goes around my waist. It's like an ice pack, gel pack. And it like actually hooks around my my waste so I can put heat or and I have a heating pad or it could be heat or cold and then when I'm off I have a it's an ice pack that just lays on your shoulders and it just kind of relaxes and any inflammation that I might have just from normal interpreting because they call it a an interpreter muscle but there's a muscle like right below the shoulder blade that um either if you're left-handed or right-handed, whatever your lead hand is, you get more of a, like a, a tense muscle, like a knot. So yeah, so then it just, that ice on there just seems to help relax it a little bit and everything. And then you're sitting, you know, you're sitting up straight in front of a camera. You're not like wiggling around, getting comfortable. You're just like right there, you know? And then of course you're interpreting, you're, you know, your hands are moving, your shoulders, your facial expressions, you know, your your it's part of the language, ASL, American Sign Language. So anyway, with all of that said, I bet you didn't want to know about that, right? <laughs> but that is what that's what I do for a living and I, I love it. I've had questions, people say, Why why do you keep working? You shouldn't have to work and la 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 la. It's like, well, uh, I like my job. I enjoy my job and it makes me feel normal and that's important to me so that's why I keep doing it. Now will I be able to keep doing it full time? I don't know. We'll find out but at least I'm going to give it a try. Okay so I've got one minute and I got to get back on my training so um, I will catch you afterwards. We are headed to the American Girl for dinner tonight with the kids and I will look forward to getting out of this room. So all right. See you in a bit, you guys. Okay, so that was a long day. And my spine is killing me right now. But it's because, and I hope my trainers aren't watching my channel, <laughs> but in the morning time, you're supposed to have 15 minutes. In the afternoon, 15 minute break plus an hour lunch, which is, is fine, however, um, because it, there's so much information to get in in a specific amount of time. There's a lot of people in the class. Um, <laughs> they have to break up the, the breaks. It's like five minutes here, five minutes there, ten minutes, which just does not give me enough time to stretch my back out, lay flat for a little bit. Um, my lunch time, though, I was able to go ahead and lay down on the heating pad and um that was that felt like a real break which so i really appreciate you guys if you're watching <laughs> don't hate me <laughs> don't hate me um you know getting an hour break instead of 30 minutes because i think 30 minutes and it would have just killed it would have killed me so anyway but now two more days left and then the next week I don't know if I have to do more training, if they think I need more training, which I, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I'm good to go, but you never know. Um, so I guess I have to do observation or something like that. I, it's been so many years since I've trained like fully like this that I, I really honestly don't remember all the, the stuff. So my brain is a little bit mush right now, so you can't, I just, 
you know, whatever. So anyway, but today I am super excited because I get to go out of the house. Yeah, I know. We're going to uh, meet my son, his wife, and three grandkids at the American Grill. And it is a beautiful day out. I think the temperature got up to like... It's 75 right oh now. Oh my gosh, 75 and it's 6.30 at night. And I'm wearing a sweatshirt. That is crazy. I mean, unbelievable. So spring is definitely coming our way and I am ready for it. So um, anyway, okay, that's good. Now, what was I gonna tell you guys? I'm just like, my brain is so mushy right now. Oh, okay. So along with working, I'm going to have to do some massive self care. Like, and I'm gonna have to make sure and exercise, do my stretches, eat right and follow my protocols for um, everything, which we will get to, um, what, what, I, what we're gonna do, what we've decided about um, a cancer journey. We will get to that. But in general, um, for me to be able to work, I am going to have to really, whoa, there goes a bump. I'm really gonna have to buckle down and um, kind of do what I preach. <laughs> what I tell everybody to do, you know, stretch, move your body, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna have to follow that advice myself. <laughs> Not that I don't, but you know, it gets left behind when I work. So I'm gonna have to learn to multitask better and do both. So that is what is going on. So now we are on our way and it is really nice and I'm super excited just to see my babies get out and just kind of uh, take a deep breath um, before we go back home, watch a show, go to bed and get up again and do it all over again tomorrow. So, all right, you guys, um, I'll take you to dinner with me. Are you guys hungry? Really? No? Hmm. All right, you guys can stay home. Sounds expensive. Talk to, yeah, it's kind of expensive. I brought everybody. <laughs> it's like, how much was the bill again? Ten thousand something dollars. All right, just kidding. Whoa, is that bright or what? I can't even see my camera. So, I will sign off right now. Ah! Good morning, you guys. Today is Saturday, and I survived my week of training. Yay! <laughs> um, it was hard, but it told me that my body can do a lot more than I think it can do. Um, if I can sit just straight on for like four hours in the morning, four hours in the afternoon with itty bitty baby breaks, uh, then I can, I can do my job because, uh, with interpreting, you get a break, you know, like more period, you know, like small breaks periodically from sitting and, and interpreting. So even though the job is physically harder, mentally harder, you get more breaks. So I don't know. You just have to trust me on it. <laughs> um, so I I made it and I'm not in that much pain, which is a miracle. Um, I did have to take my heavy hitters last night um, because I was just like, you know what? If I let it get beyond the point of no return, then I'm going to end up in ER with a needle in my back. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, do what the doctor says this time and follow instructions and then get a good night's sleep, which I did. And I'm all ready to go today. Now today, um, I'm taking, I have a very special day planned. I have a date with my oldest grandson, Levi. He just turned 13. And if you remember in my last vlog, we went uh, bowling for his birthday and we had a blast this time. Uh, just the two of us are going uh, to get him some new boots and maybe an outfit and then go uh, to lunch together and just kind of hang out for the day. Um, that was his birthday present, part of his birthday present from Nana and Grandpa to to him was, uh, you know, uh, for him to pick out an outfit and boots. So anyway, that is what's happening today. And I'm really, really glad that I'm not stuck in bed and 
not able to go because that would break my heart. So I feel good. I'm going to be up and moving and walking through the day, which is excellent for my body because after sitting all week, just laying in bed would not have been a wise choice. And it's supposed to be cloudy sunshine out today. Um, the other night we had thunder all night long. It was just so loud. Could not sleep. Bentley was shaking and barking and crying. He was scared. I was not scared. I was just like, oh, I'm so tired. I want to sleep. <laughs> but um, today is looking pretty promising. So I think it's going to be a good day. All right. I'm going to get going. And when I get back, um, I'm going to grab a uh, Mr. Too Cute for Cancer, and we are going to have a discussion on my what we have decided for my new treatment. And um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I feel very confident, uh, a little nervous, but I am ready to tackle cancer straight on and just kick it in its butt. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get going and I'm gonna take you with you with me as always. However, I don't like my grandchildren to be on camera. I try to keep them off completely. However, <laughs> my little Thea and my little Brennan, they are little camera hogs. Every time they see my camera get out, they're like, hi. <laughs> they think that you guys are all my Nana's friends and they love you. And they love to say hi to you and show you their toys and tell you what's going on in their soccer team. It it is adorable. They have such precious hearts. And they're right. You are my friends. So they don't understand why Nana doesn't want me to introduce them to you. You know, they don't understand that along with, you know, maybe five, six thousand, seven thousand of you that are really nice. There's a couple, five, ten thousand that are not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it just, it just, the couple ruin it for the whole of you. So, um, and for that reason, I try not to um, put my grandchildren on camera. But I will take you where we go, what we do. And if Levi feels okay with being on camera, then I will introduce you to him. You've met him in the past when he's a little tiny guy. If you saw him now, you would be like, whoa, is that the same kid? <laughs> he is as tall as Nana now which doesn't take a lot, but in fact, I think he's taller than me now. So I think he's like 5'3", and I'm 5'2 and a half. Add that half in there. <laughs> so anyway, all right, let's get going. I just had to show you this real quick. Look at this. So we have got yellow coming up over here. The white uh, flowers on that tree are gonna turn pink soon. And then look at the forest is starting to turn green. I'm so excited. And our tree. I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but it's got the little purple flowers starting to bud. Ah, and the grass, look at this. It is green. My flowers though, oh, there are some, a couple of um, yellow ones coming up here, but these are all gonna turn nice and pretty yellow. And then we've got our rose bushes all right here, but I have to clean all this out and there's so much I have to do. But anyway, I'm excited. Spring, spring, spring.
Okay, so we went to Boot Barn and I am so surprised. Everything except for the boots we got on sale. And I was thinking, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to get two, four shirts, five, six shirts, six shirts, a very nice pair of boots. You like your boots? Yeah. Yep. I think they're pretty cool. And I thought, okay, we're going to go out probably owing $400. That's what, in my mind, I was kind of trying to calculate up. But then when we went to the uh, checkout um, and she scanned it, the stuff that was on sale was marked down even further. So ended up walking out with $200 with, I mean, most of it was just the boots and the rest was like just unbelievable. So I love saving money. Even if I don't need to really count pennies, I love doing it. It's just fun. Why spend money you don't need to spend, right? Okay, so now we are off and we are going to Panda Express to get some yummy food. So, and it's still beautiful out. The, the clouds kind of came in a little bit on the way here and I thought it was going to rain, but now it's bright and sunshiny again. So, it is good. It is good. Catch you guys in a bit. Good morning, you guys. It is a beautiful Tuesday morning and I apologize that I have skipped a couple days and it's taking me a little bit longer to get this vlog up because as many of you know if you've been watching this video I have been training all last week and now to yesterday was um, my live calls and observation blah 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 all that kind of good stuff and today is a little bit more training and then I go, I'm back, I'm on working, working on my own. So I am, I'm very excited to get back in my VRS chair and feeling some feeling of normalcy after all of the selling the house and moving and the emotional uh, trauma of uh, scans coming back and not being unsure and all that kind of stuff is just weighing heavily on my mind So I I feel like I just need to cling to a little bit of normal um, I am extremely happy to say that I did 10 hours yesterday and um, I mean now take take into consideration I work from home and I can stand up and stretch and walk around, grab a cup of coffee, you know, all of that. So if I was working out, there's no way my body would be able to do this. So uh, there's that. Um, yeah, but you know what? I was in pain last night. I have to say I was, but it was, it was bearable. I slept like a baby last night, third night in a row. Yay. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So Today, um, I got to jump on the camera, but when I get off, we are going, on my break, we are going to discuss what uh, Ray, Too Cute for Cancer, Mr. Too Cute for Cancer, and I have decided in regards to uh, dealing with the two hot spots on my spine and my cancer markers being up. So we are going to discuss that in detail. Um, so I will be back in a flash. And you know, I thought I'd start the vlog in here. This is our um, guest room, and I don't think I've ever showed you in here before. And I'm gonna show you where kitchen is still in full swing, um, being renovated. Hubby's in there right now painting, a, painting the last coat on the cabinets. Kitchen sinks in. I'll show you an update in the next video. Uh, there isn't really time in this one. I'll show you an update and I'll show you the living room and I'm gonna need major help decorating, putting the, I've got all of my stuff together, ready to go on the walls. Furniture is in place, everything has arrived and so now it's time to do the fun stuff. So I'm gonna absolutely need your help for that. Major, because <laughs> I'm not a decorator. So anyway, let me show you the room real quick and then I gotta hurry and get on camera. All right, I'm gonna turn you around a little bit. Okay, so. Here is the guest room, and it's not yet, um, oh, what do you call it, decorated yet. It just has, I have a, oh, a mirror that I'm going to put up. Um, I kind of want to change that to a gold mirror to add some warmth and some gold fixtures and kind of warmth. And then this is the bedspread that the boys picked out. So this is what they, they were over. So this is what they like is the gray. And then Thea 
has uh, the same bedspread in pink and it's down here and it has the pretty pink uh, shabby chic ruffle and all that kind of stuff so yes I changed the bedding uh, for the for the kiddos. <laughs> so anyway, but the walls, totally everything needs to be done. So nothing really has been done. Guest closet, I just put all the coats and I leave it kind of empty. So when my sister and brother-in-law can come to visit, they stay in here. And um, yeah, and then from this view, let me see if I can get it. There is this thing here that I think I'm gonna paint white. I'm not quite sure yet. I've, I'm still mulling it over in my brain. And then the TV is going to go up here, mounted on the wall, the flat screen. So when uh, guests and people are here, they can relax at nighttime and watch their favorite shows. So there you have it. And there is the door. Yay, the big door. <laughs> All right, you guys. Later. Hello, guys. And welcome back to the vlog. Um, today is Wednesday and I am so sorry that it is taking me so long to complete this, <laughs> this video. I started it late because of training last week and then Monday I had, um, continued training and then I went on my own, but I was being observed. So that was highly stressful. And then, um, I had two different videos to watch for training and I did right to the end of an hour long video and it would crash. So then I'd have to start back over again. So anyway, a very, very frustrating first day of work uh, on Monday. Then Tuesday, yesterday was my first full day of work and I felt so good about myself. I was able to monitor my breaks, um, stretch, stand, sit, and I ended the day with pain, yes, but not to the point where it was unbearable and I don't think I can do this. So I felt really good and very positive about uh, being able to continue working uh, for the time being. I don't know how long this is going to last, but for now, I'm going to embrace it and feel a little bit a sense of normalcy, especially after moving and moving house in different states and everything's different from going to the city to the country and just feeling like everything has been eh, out of whack. So now I feel like now... Um, there's a, a routine in place and it just feels back a little bit back to normal. All right, with all of that said, um, I wanted to uh, talk about, discuss what my future holds and what my husband, uh, Ray, Mr. Too Keep for Cancer, and I have decided we had um just for a recap for anyone who is new um i'm living with stage four metastatic breast cancer triple negative and i have my scans have been ned no evidence of disease for the past um oh it's been six eight months now i keep saying six months but it's been two more months so eight months so with that said, just recently, my scans came back with two hot spots on my lower spine. The same spots are the same place that my tumors were um, before and three, four, four years ago, coming up on four years, I had surgery and I re they removed two of the tumors. So the doctor, the surgeon is saying, well, I think possibly that it could be scar tissue because it's scar tissue doesn't happen overnight. It's over time, the tissue where they cut and take things out, it builds up and then it shows. So anyway, so it could be that. However, my cancer markers are up. They tested everything twice. They did extra tests and blah, 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 blah. If you'd like to catch up with that, I will post a link at the end of this video and you can do a catch up. But that is it in a, just kind of a 
a nutshell, as they say. <laughs> so um, we first met with, um, had a meeting with my holistic doctor uh, via Zoom. He is in California, but he does consults and telehealth all over the world. He's extremely popular. And then, um, of course, you know, my oncologist here, my new oncologist, whom I really like. Um, and then, after we got kind of a take from each person, then we met together via Zoom for a, a three-way. So, my husband and I, and then the two doctors. And so, that is after we got all of that said and done. Um... We prayed, we took all the information in, and we discussed it, and we came up with a plan of attack. And that is where we are today, and that is what we're going to discuss. So, first, before I get started with this, this, this conversation, I want everybody to know that I am not a doctor. I don't play one on YouTube. <laughs> I have no medical degrees, nothing. All of the information that I am giving you is not for advice, but is my opinion, my decision, based on my experience and the information that my husband and I have lived through, experienced, and gathered on our own. So, disclaimer, if you have cancer of any kind or any kind of health, anything, do not listen to a video and say, oh, well, so-and-so did that. I'm going to do that. It doesn't work that way. You can gather information and then take it back to your doctor and say, this person did that, blah, 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 blah. What do you think? But listen to your doctor. Don't listen to YouTube and don't listen to me. This is my experience and that's all it is, is my experience. And I'm sharing my journey with you. So there you go, disclaimer, check, <laughs> check that box. All right, now I have fielded a lot of different opinions, uh, either through email, comments, uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, saying I am against chemotherapy, I am against traditional medicine, blah, blah, blah. I'm not. I'm not against chemotherapy. I'm not against anything like that at all. I have done it. So what I want to do is do a recap of everything that I've already done just really quickly for the newcomers that are here, which welcome. There's a lot of you I noticed, so I'm excited about that. Uh, so you ongoing subscribers, you can fast forward through this part if you don't want to hear it again. I know sometimes when you follow an influencer for a while, you're like, oh my gosh, they're doing the same recipe. They're doing the same thing over again. So I get it. I get you. I got you. Just ignore me right now. <laughs> All right. So in the past, and there's many different videos on my channel about this, and I will try to post those as well. But just as a quick recap, so you understand where we're at, so we can go on, is I have done surgeries, multiple surgeries, uh, double mastectomy, they took out my kidney, part of my uh, intestines, um, uh, spine, and oh, a lumpectomy the first time. Okay, so a lot of surgeries, boom, done. Radiation, boom, done. Chemotherapy, uh, I've done several different uh, types of chemotherapy and different like cocktails as they call the red devil. They name all the different different chemotherapies because if you're not familiar with how it works is like your body will become resistant to one medication, just like any medication, not just chemotherapy. I mean, you can be on one medicine for a long time and your body's just like, you know what? I'm used to this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let it bother me anymore. So then you have to change approaches and you have to start a new medication. So there's that. So chemotherapy is no different. Everybody's system, cancer, body works differently. So they will 
maybe respond better to one medication than another. So anyway, we have gone through different chemotherapies, different cocktails of chemotherapy, different, um, yeah, all of that. Okay, and at times in the very beginning, it worked like a charm. The very first time I got cancer, it was like staging was between zero and one. They did a, they took it out, they did a lumpectomy, they did um, zap me with radiation, sent me on my way. I was good for eight years. So thank God for that. It was perfect. It was wonderful. Then my cancer, um, I had a second a reoccurrence and um, instead of on one side, it was on the other side. It was in my lymph nodes and in the, I had a tumor of the chest of my wall and that's when the party really got started. And since that time, I have been, um, you know, on and off chemotherapy. I've had clean scans for up a whole year. Uh, I think one time it was almost two years I was clear. So I haven't been like um, in the fight like every day for the last 20 years. It's not like that. It's just been an ongoing battle where I've had some reprieve and some rest and relaxation thinking yay we beat it and then boom it comes back and usually it comes back with a vengeance and so then we change our approach and we just keep on going and just to let you know my type of cancer oh let me go back I've got my notes here because I don't want to miss anything um so chemotherapy radiation multiple surgeries um I did three different clinical trials because when chemo started stopped working and my cancer was still progressing and it just wasn't responding at all, um, I did three different clinical trials through a place called City of Hope. It's in LA, um, in California. Very well-known cancer hospital. Um, and it just made me so sick that I had to stop. It almost killed me, basically. It was like they were killing the cancer, but they were also killing my body. <laughs> they were just, it was, it was horrific and horrible. And um, I, I won't do any more trials. I just like, I'm not going to be a guinea pig. I just can't be. I want whatever time I have left to have quality of life, not so much quantity of life. And that has been my decision going forward after that. Um, they did some immunotherapy, however, it is not, it's not for my type of cancer. It is not, um, it's just not successful in most cases. It's not, it's not known to be successful. It is prog, it's progressed and there are some treatments that are coming out that look very promising in that area, but um, yeah, so there's that. And then after all of that was said and done, and basically they sent me home, they said, we can put you on hospice and, or you can keep trying to do chemotherapy just to keep the cancer, see if it works. And kind of like a Hail Mary, you know, and we decided that that was not what we wanted. I wanted quality of life, not Quantity. And so we actually set up a room with a hospital bed. We got everything comfortable and we prepared for the inevitable. But at that same time, my husband, teaching Sunday school, um, one of his Sunday school students was in the hospital and had been seriously, seriously ill. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. And she was in ICU and basically she was dying. And they sought out a holistic practitioner and they got a hold of this guy. He went in and anyway, long story short, he diagnosed her. He gave her a holistic protocol and worked with her doctors and she's healthy and thriving. So they, the, the parents told my husband, said, hey, I don't know if you guys are interested, but this doctor is amazing. And you know, you, it might not hurt just talk to him. 
So we got a consult with them, and in my mind, I was not having any hope of any kind of holistic anything working. I was 100% at that time against anything I called hocus pocus, voodoo medicine. You know, I had my words for it. <laughs> anyway, so we met with them, really liked him. What he said made sense. Um, and so we said, you know what? We have nothing to lose. We have done A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and none of this has... It's not working anymore. It worked for a long time, but it is not working now. My body is not responding, and let's give it a try. So we did that, and for years, it has been successful for me, and I have felt better. Just I've had a good quality of life. Yes, living in pain, um, bone pain, spine pain are my main con my main issues. Um, but I've been able to strengthen my immune system and do really well. Every time the cancer has snuck back in, we have tried a different holistic approach. Uh, this last time we did um, make a dosing of vitamin C, and that's where they give you um, vitamin C, mega doses of vitamin C intravenously. Nurse comes to your house and they they do it, they give it to you like, I think I had it done two times a week for 12 weeks, I think that was it, the first time, second time. Anyway, did that, and I had excellent results with that, and that is what put me, my scans coming back NED this last time. Now, uh, we've had a couple scares. There was a spot on my lung, there was a spot on my brain that they were looking and questioning, and after some testing, found it was not cancer, but of course, anything that goes wrong in my scans, they're instantly gonna be on it, right? So, um, thankfully, that was okay. So now, here we are again. And this is, I know, the type of cancer that I have is, it's the most aggressive, and it is typically the most aggressive, I wanna say that, because in my case, my cancer has been, in the beginning, it was very aggressive and it progressed really quick. However, uh, since I've been doing the holistic medis medicine, uh, it has been slow moving and we've had great success. I mean, I've outlived all the odds at this point. And at first I thought I was the only one, but I have met so many people that have maybe not beat triple negative breast cancer, but they have been living a stinking long time with it, with a good quality of life. And um, there is actually a link that I'm going to drop below in the description if anybody wants to check them out. It's interviews with doctors and patients that have actually outlived the odds. These people have been living 23, 24, 28 years after having stage four metastatic breast cancer or liver or, you know, just all the different types of cancer. It is amazing and it is inspiring. So I'm going to leave the link below so you can go and search this site and just see what's out there. See a little sunshine. So, okay, now what does the future hold for me? That's the question. That's what you guys have all been waiting for, right? Um, you know, only God knows how things are going to go. Is my cancer going to light up and spread through my body and this is it? Is this the time I'm not going to be able to keep it under control? Or am I going to keep doing what I've done in the last four years? I don't know. Um, only God knows. But I know that I've taken all the advice, both doctors and we have come up with a plan. All right, so now, in the past, I've done traditional medicine alone. Um, then I did holistic medicine, no traditional medicine. The only thing my traditional doctors, uh, mainstream doctors did was just keep track of my labs and my scans, and that's it. Okay, 
now we are doing an integrative approach and I just thought I would a lot of people are like what's integrative uh, okay integrative means a little we're doing both and they support each other so for example um, say I do the chemo pill which I'm not just hold, put a pin on that one. Okay, say I'm doing chemotherapy and then my holistic practitioner goes in, keeps track of my labs and tells me what supplements, what food, how to build up the immune system to keep it as strong as possible to come combat the effects of chemotherapy, radio, whatever the treatment is. That is an integrative approach. That's taking both and putting them together and fighting uh, that way. Okay, so that is what we have decided to do. We haven't done that before. It's either being one or the other. So this time we are doing an integrative approach. All right, this is, this is what we decided. For the next six weeks, we are doing a holistic uh, plan, a very detailed, in-depth holistic protocol that my both my doctors my oncologist and my holistic doctor are going to be overseeing watching my labs and making sure that um, markers don't shoot up any further if there's anything if my vitamin D or you know anemia whatever they're gonna keep a very close eye on it and at the end of the six weeks, we are going to go back into my scans again, check my labs, make sure, see where we're at. If my spots or anything has changed to the worse, you know, if uh, my cancer seems to be growing, spreading, um, any indication at all that things are not either staying the same, staying the same is good. I mean, when you have stage four metastatic breast cancer, that is a good thing. When you're not, when your tumors aren't going crazy and moving around, that is a good thing. Okay. So the holistic plan is basically in a nutshell, and we're going to, I'm going to do a whole video just on this because it is so in depth and detailed. There's no way I could do it all in the end of this video. But um, the thing is, is they build up the immune system. Uh, work on reducing inflammation because I don't know if you guys know, but inflammation is the main cause of all diseases. Your body gets, it's not a good thing. So reducing inflammation, building the immune system up, and then increasing the healthy cells, making sure everything's going great because cancer is a mutated cell that has gone rogue and they just, so what? the holistic plan is to make my body a not a hospitable place for the mutated cells, the cancer to thrive in. Because you can have a body, a system that is toxic and, you know, just it, it welcomes cancer. It says, come and get me. You know, it's like, come on. And cancer's like, okay, let's do this. Not that simple, of course. Not saying that cancer cells can't thrive in a healthy immune and body, because that's not true. You know that it, it can. But it has less chances of spreading in a controlled environment. And that is the goal, to keep my immune system high anti-inflammatory, um, acid levels, pH, I'll talk about that later, but that controlled and um, increase all the healthiness and stuff to make sure that the cancer doesn't have a healthy place to go to, to grow. That is the holistic goal. I mean, it's a lot more in detail than that, but that's just, just giving you all a little bit until we can do the whole video. Then, at the end of this time, we're all going to sit down, bring all the, the results and everything to the table, and then we, if things are not going the way that we pray that they will, then I will go on Ibrance or Ibrank, I don't know how to say it, 
eye brand, eye brand. Anyway, the chemo pill. <laughs> I will start that, and at the same time, integrative approach, I will be working with um, Dr. Modar, my holistic practitioner, and I will be doing the same thing basically that I'm going to do without any chemotherapy. But um, if that doesn't work and we need something a little more aggressive, then we are going to do both of them together to give uh, my body a better fighting chance of not getting wore down, not damaging all my organs and my heart because I've already got heart problems because of the chemotherapy in the past. I've got severe, neur severe neuropathy, again, from the chemotherapy in the past. I've got like, you know, it just you can't do as much treatment as I've done over the years and not come out unscathed. It just is what it is. But your body has a miraculous way of being able to restore itself and to heal. And so it's not like this is like been life altering. I mean, the neuropathy is, 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 is bad. I don't like it. I don't want it. But um, it hasn't ended. I mean, it hasn't affected my quality of life to where I, I'm so miserable I can't enjoy anything. So that's what I'm saying. And then also, um, yeah. So that is the plan for right now. We are going to hit it hard with this plan. And I'm trying some stuff that I've never tried before. And I'm a little nervous, but it's okay. It'll be a new adventure and I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to go with it. So that is it. All right. I think I have got, I've covered everything on my, on my, uh, on my list. <laughs> um, okay, so what I ask of you guys is, I don't want to, you know, I have to protect my emotional and my stress levels. So I may not read negative comments. I have a moderator that will go through and anything that is cruel, mean, you know, you guys know it, the trolls, people that are miserable that just want to attack you behind a screen, you know, not going to deal with it. I'm just going to focus on the positive and read your comments and, uh, yeah, opinions. I'm fine with opinions, but, you know, please don't leave. Oh, you're going to die if you do this on my, on my comments. Please do not do that. And don't tell me about your aunt who did vegetables and juicing and killed herself with it. I don't want to hear that either because this is my decision and I need you guys' support. You guys have been the most supportive, most loving people. I mean, I could ever ask for. You guys are amazing and I appreciate each and every one of you and I love reading your comments even though I don't get a chance to comment sometimes I do read them and I do appreciate them so yeah I am excited to get going and do this and I have I have high hopes so there we have it um all right so if you are not subscribed, I gotta do the lingo thing. If you're not subscribed to my channel and you wanna follow my journey, wanna know what holistic medicine looks like from my perspective and hear all about it, then stick with me and I will be going through it all. I will be filming it all, <sighs> the whole bit. Also, I will be updating you on our home renovations because our kitchen is almost done, so I'm super excited. And yeah, so I will be back with you guys with another video next week. I hope you guys will join me. Um, all right, you guys, love you all, and I will see you on the next one. This is Too Cute for Cancer, signing off.